been to work in the morning at five to be on set by five thirty, and I go to see them at eight, and they've been asleep for two hours because they're basically wake up, just fell asleep. And Jermaine often falls asleep between takes. I mean, we were in a restaurant in Brooklyn filming a scene, and we we're literally just turning the scene around. We're doing, we're doing, putting the cameras on the other side of the shot, and Jermaine sat in the corner. I went and I just left him for two seconds. I turned around, he's fast asleep on his back, snoring. Well, I think the thing is, I'm naturally a lazy person. It's unfortunately. Um, without design fallen into um, a line of work which re requires a lot of work. And, um, Laziness doesn't help. A lazy person <laughs> shouldn't be made to work as much as I have to. Now, which one of you was asleep on the floor in the other room? That was me. That, that was Jermaine, yeah. Jermaine? yeah. No, really How are you right. feeling? I'm sleep talking now. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me what you've been doing today. We're working on the song Mermaids uh, for the show. And we're trying to make it sound awesome. At the moment it sounds mediocre. Do you yeah. Try to get a Bing Crosby, a Fred Astaire type sound. Tell us a little background about the show, how you put it together. Well, we had a huge back catalogue of songs, and so we started using them. Some worked better. I mean, we have one song about mermaids, so that meant that in the middle of one of the shows, we, we start seeing mermaids. It's hard to work in mermaids into, yeah. into a story. Yeah. Especially in the Lower East Side, you don't see very many. So what is water polo? Uh, it's like polo, but in the water. On seahorses? No, just swimming. OK. Beautiful swimming ladies. Yeah, swimming... In the water, beautiful wow. ladies. Like mermaids? Yes, like mermaids. Oh, 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 oh. Mermaid. Now it was always a worry for me how all the songs have been integrated into the show because if you watch a musical, most of the time when they start breaking out a song, you really feel like you're going to be sick because it's so embarrassing. But with the Brett and Jermaine characters, because they're not very good at expressing themselves, they when they break into song, you kind of accept that because you think, oh, finally they're expressing themselves. It's really nice to see them saying something they really mean, and and it's almost like a a, a, a voice in their head. It's the, it's the it's the inner voice of Jermaine and Brett speaking, which is nice to see in song. Getting along with lots of chicks. Who? Hey. Well, uh, Sarah Fitzpatrick, uh, Michelle Fitzpatrick, Claire Fitzpatrick. The list goes on. Well, that was all of them. Well, triple figures. No, that's not triple figures, that's three. We never really address how long they've been in America for, but um, it's supposed to be about a year or two. The idea they've been there, they have made a friend, a fan, you know, they're doing things, but they're not like, it's not all. It's not from the very beginning, like the first moments in America, like well, where's everyone fat? You know, it's not, it's not, that's what jokes, we don't like those jokes really. Look, I don't know how they do things back in England. New, New Zealand. Zealand. Yeah, whatever, I don't really give a shit. But the point is, going out with your best friend's ex-girlfriend while you still live with your best friend, that kind of thing would be considered a little weird here in the U.S. Dave is kind of represents America in many ways for us. He, he's their mentor, and we thought, we thought it'd be funny if Dave is a man who has super confidence where he doesn't really deserve to have any confidence in himself because he, um, he thinks he knows everything and he knows nothing. Dave, we need to borrow some of your cool clothes. 
You want to borrow my clothes? Yeah, I need something that's cool but also sexy. Oh, I, I think Dave is uh, I secretly a little bit excited that two musicians think he's cool. And they maybe look up to him a little bit. And that maybe hasn't really happened to him a lot in his life. So he's willing to take the uh, take the reins. But does he know much about anything? I don't think so. I don't know how you guys do things in Europe. New Zealand. Zealand. Yeah, probably. Today I'll be playing Aragon. Aragorn, King Don of Gondor. Aragon. Aragon, King of, Go King of Gondor. And uh, this will be my elven wife. She will now become mortal because... I'm giving away my immortality to be with him. But they still live. I'm just, I'm, I'm so in love. Seriously, if you know the story, I think you know that Aragon lives probably a good couple hundred years. Well, it's not eternity, which is what I'm giving up well, for you. Well, it feels like an eternity being married to you, but whatever. <laughs> I play Mel, who's uh, the Flight of the Concords um, only fan in America and in probably the world. According to the to the to the reality of the show, not the real reality, which I know, I'm outnumbered. Oh, hey guys. Hey, Mel. Hey, Mel. Hey, whoa. It's crazy meeting you here, huh? What outside our house? <laughs> yeah, Brett. You are so funny. I love your sense of humor. Most people we cast in the show, we do from tapes of a lot of people. But with Kristen, our producer, just came in with a DVD and said. I saw this girl on the weekend doing stand-up, and she and she put it on, and it was Kristen. I don't think I even even listened to what she was saying. We just went, yep. After about thirty seconds. Yeah, maybe even fifteen seconds. Thought she's great. She'll be good. Mel is really passionate, and she's um, you know, let's face it, she's pretty smart. Like they're both super sexy and really talented. Do you think she has a favorite? You know. I don't think so, but I think I do think that it, her um, intense passion uh, probably oscillates between the two from time to time, just based on who's giving her a little bit more attention. Mm. So, uh, have you and um, Mel been following us through this whole during this whole tour? Tour, Doug. Uh, it seems like it. Mel's in charge of the itinerary. She said she just wanted to get away on a road trip. Get away from it all. The character that plays your agent, is he, he's your agent or manager? Our manager, Reese Darby, yeah, Reece the character of Murray, yeah. Murray, he's fantastic. He's, uh... He's he... all right. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's really good. He, this always, is, he uh... makes us laugh a lot. That's the hardest scenes to do. OK, guys, band meeting. Brett. Yep. Jermaine. Jermaine? Well, you, obviously. Yeah, well, you're here. Yeah, well, I'm here, so why do I have to say that I'm here? Well, it's just I've got it all written down, you know. Yeah, but I'm just here, so if you can see me here... Then... Murray present, see? Even I do it. It's just it's how we do it. Reese Darby's character, Murray, I felt that it was funny, the idea that there's a man with a proper job who has a dream of doing another job, which he does on the side, and I thought that's a great tragedy inherent in his life. That he And it would make him much nicer when he, went, when he tries. He really tries hard all the time, and that's so nice. Obviously, his, his classic is uh, band meeting, and then the roll call, where he uh, asks the guys, he tells, he asks their names, whether they're there or not. They're always there. And then he uh, writes everything down, notates everything down. Um, uh, another saying is, uh, um, did you miss me? A little bit. A little bit, eh? And, and what else? Um, is he? Did you? <laughs> this is the thing. He's very. He's like a mother to them. You know, I'd say a father figure, but more motherly. Most a lot of the show is basically like a five-year-old telling a three-year-old something. That is a lot of the show jokes in the show. It's basically if you imagine all the characters as children, then it becomes very apparent how we write the show.